day, folks. Praise Yah, praise Yah. Glory to him who, who um, confirms his messengers. If you notice the background, it's all as well. But we learn some things from you. That if this, when you disperse your right and you told the truth, uh, that I hold your cool, you know. And I was guilty when I hold my cool. So I was man enough to um, admit that even though I was right, and that I was honest and truthful, that I didn't have to go any further than that. And so, like you, you know, I got, I got some going to do too, so I need you guys to help me. That's, that's why I stay on these channels, that's why I go on YouTube and other things like that. So when you see me in public, you say, hey, bro, you know, you can stand this, but I noticed you're doing that. And I say, oh, you know what, oh, man, you know what, I was in the fall, thank you. I'm going to do that. So back to the question at hand, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Give us, give us the wisdom, the knowledge, and the patience and the understanding to get this that we made that we're, that you're sharing with us. And while you put it on my spirit, to share it out with my brothers and sisters. And may you be glorified by the power of the Holy Spirit. I come into the prophet before me, not to me, and say thank you. Tila. So here, this is the, this is the uh, what I had promised you guys about uh, the human capital theory in education. When I told us, I was give you that, you that video. So here we go. Now this, I'm gonna show it to you. I don't know if you can see it. All right. It's an actual document. So I'm gonna read you, read you a few pages, and I, I want you brothers and sisters to understand what's happening to you, whether you're rich, poor, whatever the case may be, that you're being marketed. And so here's the theory. This is by Patrick. Fitzsimmons, University of Auckland. Throughout Western countries, education has recently been re theorized under human capital theory as primarily an economic device. Human capital theory is the most influential economic theory of Western education, setting the framework of government policy since the early 1960s. It is seen increasingly as a key determinant of economic performance, a key strategy in determining economic performance has been to employ a conception, a conception of individuals as human capital and various economic metaphors such as technology, technological change, cell phones, remember I took my phone out, research, innovation, productivity, education, and competitiveness. I got mines, you got to get yours. I'm this, you ain't that. That competitiveness. Economic considerations per se in the past, however, have not determined education. So back then in slavery, education wasn't found economical. So they used nigger, black cones, you know, these words, and taught you something else. They educated you the opposite. But now they figure out how to educate you along with them, give you old education, but just give you just enough, like these cell phones, to function and keep putting money in their pockets. Next paragraph. In the wealth of nations, 1776, Adam Smith formulated the basis of what was later to become the science of human capital. 1776. And you, you praise the 4th of July as follows. I'll read it again. In the Wealth of Nations, 1776, Adam Smith formulated the basis of what was later to become the science of human capital. Over the next two centuries, two schools of thought can be distinguished. The first school of thought distinguished between the acquired capacities that were classified as capital and the human beings themselves, who were not. A second school of thought claimed that human beings themselves were capital and of individuals operating within freely competitive markets. Sports, education, clothes, music, all those things in life. And it said that a second, second school behavior based on economic self, hold on, self edge well, lost that paragraph. A second school of thought claimed that human beings themselves were, were, were capital and individuals operated within free competitive markets. Other forms of behaviors are excluded or treated as distortions of the model. So this being Hebrew Israelites and all those things are the distortions in their model. Uh, being, us being scientists and NASA and rocket scientists and those things that are, you know, are highly advanced is not part of their model. A prominent explanation for that move is provided by a recent reformulation of human capital theory, 
which has stressed the significance of education and training as key to participation in the new global economy. In one of his recent reports, the OECD 1997A7, for example, claims that radical changes to the public and private sectors of the economy introduced over recent years in response to globalization would be severe and disturbing to many established values and procedures. And other reports that explain internationalization and higher education as a component of globalization. The OECD in 1979, Department of uh, Class 5B, Section 11, believes that internationalism should be seen as a preparation for the 21st century, capitalism. The form of capitalism is based on investment and financial markets rather than in the manufacturing of commodities, thus requiring de dependence on electronic technology. The organization also boldly asserts the internationalism a means to improve the quality of education. In keeping with the human capital theory, it has been argued that the overall economic performance of OE OECD countries is increasingly more directly based upon their knowledge stock and their learning cap capabilities. Foray and Lundville, 1996-21. Clearly, the OECD attempted to produce a new role for education in terms of human capital subject required in globalist institutions. Here what he just said. Produce a new role for education in terms of human capital subject required in glob globalized institutions. Now, if I'm going to your college, I'm going to your technical schools, I'm going to CCACs and these little minor schools, it says that there's a new role in this now. And they didn't tell you the new role. Let's go on. Now remember, this is human capital theory. In terms of structural reform under human capital theory, the basis for nation-state structural policy frameworks is the enhancement of labor flexibility through regulatory reform in the labor market, as well as rising skill levels by additional investments in education, training, and employment schemes, and immigration focused on the attracting High quality human capital. Now, when you see us acting fools and killing each other, and it's things that we hear in music, as taking that sans peg, sans, pants sagging, women with different colored hairs, fake breast implants, and things like that, they're saying that training, employment schemes, and immigration focus on attracting high quality. So, do you think that is high quality? Ask yourself right now. My brothers and sisters, do you think that the so-called black man and the so-called black woman and the so-called black community is high quality right now? Are we living on a standard that we can honestly say as individuals that we're living on a high quality? No. Because that's the new role in their education, that they want higher quality. And if we as so-called black people that are going to perform in a high quality state, we're going to female camps and we're going to die and they're going to keep killing us. This is their theory. Human capital theory has been criticized on a number of counts. Two critiques are outlined here, one external and one internal. The clear statement of the deficiencies of human capital theory goes to the heart of non-neoclassical economics, the revival of economic sociology, in particular in the hands of Fred Block, 1990, verse 20, uh, chapter 21, seeks to challenge the basic assumptions motivating the methodology of neoclassical economics. He claims the rest on two basic building blocks. The first is the idea that the economy is an uh, analytically separate realm of society that can be understood in terms of its own internal dynamics. Economists are perfectly aware that politics and culture influence economy. I'm going to leave that at that, but look up the name of this, 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 this uh, video. Culture, politics, influence the economy. So, black African American culture is no longer influencing the economy. That's why they're flooding all these immigrants from all these other parts of the country. Because they want a different product. They want a different national gross income to uh, uh, uplift their global economy to uplift their global investments. So we're just saying to you so-called black man and black woman that if we don't get together and begin to lift each other up in quality and standards from the heart to the, to the soul, to the spirit, and to the physical, um, we're going to be left behind.
So there's something to think about, but it, once again, it's called the theory, uh, human capital theory in education. And you can find this in the Encyclopedia of Philosophy of Education. The next time is Homo Hosea saying, peace, may the most I keep y'all safe, and we pray that somebody watch this video and learn something from it. We out.